Hi everyone, it's Angela from Happy Dotting Company. Today I get to share with you another new product. It's a sphere mold. So that's what it produces there. And as you can see, it's got a top dot on it in the middle to help with symmetry. So um, this is the mold that it actually comes from. Uh, you know, it's been quite a while in development and um, I'm very happy with the end result now. So um, today I thought I would actually show you how to cast one of these and um, also give you some tips on casting as well. So um, hope you'll join me. Okay, so I'm going to be um, casting a sphere mould for you in a moment and show you how to do that. Um, but firstly, I, I wanted to offer you just a couple of tips on casting and talk about um, a couple of, um, you know, questions that I get asked often to do with um, casting. So probably the biggest question I get asked is what to use for the casting mix. Now, um, I, I do say in my information, you know, that I have available on Etsy and on my website that I like to use UltraCal 30. Um, UltraCal 30, it's a high strength gypsum powder and it is uh, available online in a lot of places around the world and here in Brisbane I get it from a shop called Barnes at Wool and Gabba. Um, but look, basically UltraCal 30 is made up of approximately 90% plaster of Paris and 10% cement. So I suppose, you know, if you don't have UltraCal 30 readily available um, in a shop near you, then you could make it up just by buying plaster of Paris and buying some cement from your hardware shop, which can, is usually very cheap. Not the cement that has gravel in it, just the pure cement that they actually use as an additive to gravel and water. So just the cement powder. And then you could make a blend of that. Um, you know, for me, that's, um, it's just much more convenient to go and buy the UltraCal 30. I think if you were making up your own mixture, then um, you would have to be very careful about where you do it, that you don't breathe in the powder and, you know, <clears throat> you essentially, you know, work out your own sort of ratios, um, including, you know, how much water you're going to add to your mix. So that could be quite fiddly. Look, if you are brand new to casting, there is nothing wrong with just starting with a plaster of Paris mix. However, the problem with that is that it's going to be more porous and it's going to be more fragile. But, you know, certainly to have a play um, and to get started, there's nothing wrong with that. And plaster of Paris is available everywhere. So there's lots of other casting mixtures, mixtures available, often in, available in your hardware store that has different combinations of additives. And, um, you know, like there's a product called casting powder in Australia that's a very cheap from uh, Bunnings and it comes in a big 20 kilo bag. And that approximately has 95% plaster of Paris and just 5% cement. I find the difference quite noticeable um, but certainly it's a very good alternative because UltraCal 30 um, is often just that little bit harder to get and a bit more expensive. So that's all I sort of wanted to say about casting powders. Um, but in a nutshell, it's highly likely you will find something suitable from your hardware shop. Uh, it does make it less economical if you're buying it online because obviously people have to factor in shipping. And it is a very heavy product. That's personally why I don't ship it around the world myself. Um, okay, so the next tip I wanted to talk about with casting is I do get asked sometimes, um, people, well, people tell me that they get bubbles in the bottom of their mix. And so obviously when you turn out a product, it's going to have bubbles or little divots in the top of their mould. And to be honest, this is not a problem I've encountered myself and I don't really understand why some people would get this problem and others don't. However, I have done some research and I've discovered that there is a method that will help with this. And very basically, it's by using a surfactant. So a surfactant is just a, um, a chemical or a product or a mixture that breaks the surface tension of 
um, whatever you're putting it on, like water, for instance. So this surfactant here that I've made up is very simply just about half a teaspoon of dishwashing liquid to water in just this old um, sort of dispenser, spray dispenser that I had hanging around. Another surfactant that you could use is actually a little bit of Windex and then top the rest up with water. So if you've got a Windex, you know, window cleaning solution and you're really at the bottom of it, you could top the entire thing up with water so it's quite dilute and also you could use that as a surfactant. So I'll show you how to do this and how to use the surfactant once we get going with making the mould. The other thing that I get asked is, um, do people have to seal the moulds? Personally, I don't seal them before painting them. Um, some people like to seal them because they feel that they get very flaky underneath and that's sort of where the mould is um, most flaky on the underneath side there. Um, look, I just um, realised that it is going to be sort of more um, predisposed to flaking on the bottom right up until when I finish painting it and I finish sealing it. So however you choose to seal it, either with resin or with a liquid sealer or even a spray sealer, it is going to be um, just a little bit more flaky on the bottom. But I've never really had a problem with them sort of chipping elsewhere. If you do choose to seal them, some people use uh, Rust-Oleum from a hardware shop. Um, but I do have concerns about that it might interfere with the adherence of the paint or, or making the paint dots beautiful sort of as you're painting. So I do have some concerns about that. And as I said, I, I actually personally don't seal them before putting on a background paint. Another question I get asked is, um, can the um, moulds that are made with UltraCal 30 go outside? Um, what I've actually read is that according to the manufacturers of UltraCal 30, they are actually only for inside use. Having said that, um, I have actually had some of mine outside for over two years now, um, you know, since I've been casting, and let me tell you, there's no... Um, um, hint of disintegration so you know I, I, I don't know whether um, maybe longer term the um, UltraCal 30 would eventually disintegrate outside and it probably depends a lot on what you actually seal them with if you're sealing them with a product that is designed to be outside um, you know something from hardware store that's for external use in, sorry, exterior use um, but certainly mine, some of which are bare, so they're not sealed at all, have been outside for over two years with no um, problems with disintegration. But we don't have ice and snow here. We're a very hot climate where I am in Brisbane, Australia. So the other question I just wanted to touch on is that I get asked um, for the mixing quantities. Now, I, I just can't have the mixing quantities for every product that's possibly available all over the world. So I only really um, have the mixing quantities available for the UltraCal 30. Um, however, I think a lot of the mixing quantities are very similar. So roughly, um, you know, two thirds um, or two scoops of powder to one scoop of water is roughly the ratio of most mixing powders but you know if you want sort of the best result then I do suggest you just follow the recommendations on the product that you use. Um, just in terms of the mixing quantities that I offer I do have a data sheet and this is available um, on my website as a download. So my website is www happy.incompany.com so I will put that in the description below as a link um, and like I said this is available as a download it has the mixing quantities but it also has all the dimensions for all the different molds that I currently have and there are more coming so <laughs> one at a time um, okay so when you um, order the sphere mold it will come with a uh, foam packing around the edge of it like this and this serves two purposes it's to protect it um, 
sort of whilst in postage, although they are actually very flexible and robust. Um, but it is also to offer a option of actually um, suspending the mould whilst you cast in it. So um, it just sort of sits in like this and you should be able to sort of maybe with a little bit of adjustment have it fixed nicely like that and you can actually use that to pull your mould into. Um, Another alternative is to find something around your house which actually has uh, the right opening or the right dimensions to support it as well. And if you want to find something around your house like a Tupperware container or something like that, you will need a circular um, inner circumference of about 90 millimetres which is just over three and a half inches. Okay, so firstly I'll show you the surfactant and how easy that is. So like I said, it's just a spray and I'll um, show you what I do here. So this is a, um, a tea light mould and this has produced this um, tea light and I just spray it in like that. You don't need a lot and you can just run it around like that. Now you don't actually need to um, you don't want that to let that pool so I actually sit it upside down whilst I'm making my mix and you can do the same for the sphere as well so what I've done is spray a little bit in there now I'm actually going to sit it upside down deliberately so it doesn't pool in the bottom and now I'm going to make the mix so I'm just going to cast the sphere mold today uh, so we're going to need, according to the data sheet, we're going to need 5.7 ounces of water. go that'll do uh, and then I'm going to zero that and we're going to need 15 ounces of powder so it's a fair bit because it is actually quite a, a big sphere So now I just um, let that sit for a couple of minutes and you can see that the water is sort of coming up through the um, UltraCal 30 mix and um, we want to sort of just let that do its thing and that just sort of helps it become a nice, um, you know, even mix all the way through. So if you wanted to, um, you know, make more than one mould at a time, then all you simply do is add the uh, mixing quantities together um, that's on your um, uh, data sheet that's available as a download on my website. And it has been updated. Um, there are a couple of measurements that I've tweaked. Um, you know, I was getting some feedback that um, the tea light mould measurement was um, slightly too much, so I've um, reduce that a little bit and um, hopefully they're all pretty accurate now. Okay. So I've turned my um, sphere mould over there as you can see. Now all I want to do is just gently um, Put my hand through this I don't want to be too vigorous but at the same time I want to make sure it's it is well mixed 
And um, the good thing about doing it with a gloved hand is that I can actually still feel if there's any, um, you know, little lumps in it that I can just squash between my fingers and make it nice and smooth. As you can see it's quite a runny mix. Um, but that's just what it looks like. Now I'll pour that in. bits run over to the side there but that's fine so that's done now I let that um, sit there um, and to be honest um, I could probably take it out of the mold in a few hours but I generally leave it for about six hours or overnight um, you will notice that there will be um, like a, a generous sort of a film of water develop on the top. You actually really don't need to do anything about that. It will sort of take it up by itself or evaporate. Um, so you really don't need to um, do anything with it now. I'm just going to give that a wipe there with my finger. So that ends up a nice smooth edge. Here we go. Um, and like I said, I, I will take that out of the mould tomorrow. I also wanted to mention um, that the Sphere um, mould does actually have a dome template that goes with it. So the idea, um, just like the other dome templates that are with the other art stones, is that, um, you know, there's the little um, dot there that sort of comes through on the mould. And you just pop that over there, line it up with it, and then you can draw symmetry marks. You know, this is a um, chalk pencil through the uh, dome template like that. I won't do it all, I'm just showing you basically what to do. And that gives you really great um, you know, marks so that your work is nice and um, even and symmetrical. And this is a um, an art stone, you know, from the sphere mould that I've made up. Um, as you can see, I've dot painted it. This one doesn't actually have resin on it yet, but um, you can imagine how pretty it's going to be when I do put it on. So there you go. That's the shape all done. Um, I also just uh, forgot to mention earlier that um, this mix, you will feel after um, about, um, oh, probably about half an hour, that it will actually start to feel warm. And that's normal. That's part of the curing process. To me, it doesn't get super hot, but it will get warm. And then when it's finished curing and when it's back to room temperature, you can tell that it's actually gone quite solid. So, um, you know, that's sort of when I know when it's... Um, cured and it's actually set. So this is one that I've made earlier so I will just show you how I take that out. So it just sort of lifts off its little um, foam um, holder there and um, basically to release it you just pull back the edges like that and there you have it. So that is the mould. And as you can see, with um, using the um, uh, sorry surfactant, um, you know the detail that I've been able to get on this one around the top is um, really good. So maybe that might help some people. Anyway, um, so that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching. And, um, you know, please subscribe. I've got new products coming all the time and I always like to share what I learn with you so that, um, you know, we can help each other out and enjoy this craft together. So, again, thank you so much and um, see you next time. Bye.